We end the fifth hadith of the 40 collections, hadith collected by Imam al-Nawawi, believed to be the most important and comprehensive hadith uh, in Islam. An Umm al-Mu'mineen, Umm Abdillahi, Aisha radiallahu anha, narrated Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, the Umm Abdillah, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallam, the mother of the believers, they used to give kunya, which is the father of such and such, Abu Fulan, Umm Fulan, even if somebody does not have children, as one of the uh, ways uh, that Arabs used to um, address one another. Uh, her kunya was Umm Abdullah, Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her. She narrated, قالت, قال Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد. رواه بخاري ومسلم. The hadith is translated as whoever invented anything in our affair, in our religion, uh, it's not, it is going to be rejected or returned, not accepted. Whoever does an action that is not according to our standard or Islam is going to be uh, not accepted. Obviously, the, the meaning of the hadith is, uh, and this is one of the clearest and, and most important uh, things in Islam, is that our religion has a standard. And our standard of doing actions, especially ibadat, is so clear. SubhanAllah, in the time that we see people, uh, people of faith around us, they do the same thing in multiple ways, in tens of different ways. The way they worship, in the days they worship, uh, all of them they follow the same religion or big umbrella, but they have different denominations that they do it in a, in a, in a very different way. In Islam, our prayers, our ritual system enlarged is pretty much the same wherever you go because of the standard. This hadith is like the standard of the scale for all the actions, for all the outwardly actions. It, it should be done according to certain standard. It is like a form, like an application. And there is an, uh, a way or, or a, a way that, that explains how to fill this application, how to do the actions. The other, that's 50% of the thing. The other 50% is Mizan al-A'mal al-Baltina, which is Hadith al niyyah The first Hadith, Innam al-A'mal bil niyyah Every action should be done with a specific intention is going to be judged and determined by the specific intention behind it. And how much you're going to take of reward from your action is based on how much of good intention you have in it. Both of these hadith, uh, two hadith give us the standard. Uh, uh, if the niyyah is missing, if you do something with, with, with intention for people, or for to please somebody, to show off, not for Allah, something that should be done for Allah. You do it for with no intention to please Allah, no it's to please others, this is shirk, and you're associating others with Allah. If you do something, yes, the, the niyyah is pure to Allah, but the action is not uh, according to the standard, laysa alayhi amruna, then this is bid'ah, or this is not according to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ishtarat fil qabul amri. Two things, two conditions should be there for an action to be accepted. Number one, al-ikhlas, purity of it, intention should be pure. Number two, al-mutaba'ah, following of the Prophet ﷺ, the way you do the, uh, the action. Um, if you do it otherwise, if you do it in a, your own standard, if we do not worship Allah by our whims and emotions, I like to have it this way and I think it gets me closer to Allah, I think, uh, but that's not the way. Yani I was, uh, I usually use this example. If you want to give a gift for somebody, you don't give him a gift that you like. Because it's not necessary that what you like, he would like. If I'm giving Brother Mas'ud a gift, uh, uh, making him something to, giving him something to please him, I should choose something that he likes, right? And if I want to please him, if I want to give him a gift, not the, my way. So if you want to worship Allah, please Allah, don't please him your way, please him his way. Otherwise, you will be not pleasing Allah. You will be pleasing yourself. Because you are doing this according to what you believe is right when it is not right. There is no way to worship Allah except through what He subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, enacted and told us. Uh, an example for this is uh, Sahabi by the name of Abu Israel. He decided one day that I would fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would stand all day in the sun. لا يستضل ولا يقعد. Stand. He cannot sit down. He, uh, he would not take a shade, he would be in the sun, and he would fast all day like that. 
النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال غروف ليجلس وليستضل وليتم صومه. He said tell him to sit down and go in the shade and continue his fasting. This is not right. You don't invent. You don't want to please Allah subhanahu wa taala in something that you uh, invent. And many other examples. The, the three Sahaba. One of them came and he said, نظر تو I am not going to marry women. He is trying to get closer to Allah. He is trying to تعبد يتقرب من الله by doing that. And Allah subhanahu wa taala blamed also in other people in the. الرهبان قال ورهبانيتنا بتدعوها ما كتبناها عليه. They are trying to worship Allah through what? What is the action? Not getting married, like the monks or the nuns. That's one way they think it's يعني gets them closer to Allah. But Allah said ما كتبناها عليه. We haven't recorded that or enacted this or give them this. So if you want to get closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم used to warn us. In the beginning of every khutbah, وَإِيَّاكُمُ مُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ I warn you, beware of all inventions in religion, again, in religion, not any other invention, because every invention in religion is going to be rejected simply because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he passed away, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed the ayah to him, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ Today I have completed the religion. The deen is complete. The ni'mah of Allah is perfect. There's no way that you add in terms of ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is, before I conclude, there is another concept uh, of al-bid'ah al-hasana. Not everything invented, even in religion, is rejected. Some other ways could be introduced into, even into ibadat, that could be accepted. And, and the scholars have many uh, path and uh, researches in that. It shouldn't be the ibadah itself, it's mostly in the, wasay, in the ways, the way we do it. Most of what we have nowadays, the prayer is the same, but there was no mic in the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is wasila. There was no masajid in the way they are nowadays, but this is again wasila, one of the ways to do it. But you cannot uh, uh, pray five raka'at isha. No, the, the ibadah should be the same, but when it comes to al wasail there was no schools in the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the way we build school nowadays, I'm talking about Islamic schools or madaris al-shara'iyya, yani, it is to get closer to Allah. It's, it's one way of ibadah, but it's not ibadah in itself. It's wasila, the kitab al ilm. Walam yujad sabaha ka ahdun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scholars have concluded with this. They find a few parameters for anything to be bid'ah. Number one, it should be amal muhdith, totally invented. It was not done in the time of the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of these should be combined. Number two, it should be mansub li deen. Whatever you do for adah, whatever you eat, if you eat biryani every day. But this is not, you don't eat it to get closer to Allah. Right? You eat it just as ibadah. Should be okay. But the minute you say this is ibadah and doing it to get closer to Allah, no, that should be according to the standard. لَيْسَ لَهُ أَصْلٍ فِي الدِّينِ It shouldn't have any way that you refer to uh, the religion somehow. And the final thing, لَمْ يُوجَدْ سَبَبُ فِي عَهْدِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. There was no reason for it to be done in the time of the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. Again, like schools, it was not needed in this way, in this shape, in the time of the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. And, and that's why he didn't do it. But if he lived to our time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would build schools and, and do other in other ways to uh, help uh, yani study or worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala better. But let's again refer back to our standard and be proud of our standard and a few actions that we could be doing according to the standard, pure intention, and the action is following the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A few of them, abrak will be full of more, much more blessings than so many actions and so many deeds that we do out of our you know, desire out of our awat, if we think, oh yeah, I want to worship Allah this way, I want to say that many times, this dhikr every day and this time. No, those are probably invented things that you want to stay away from.